Good evening and welcome to another presentation from the Agency for Public Information. The API is your official source for the latest information on the plans, programs and policies of the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am Shanna Daniel. Just ahead on this evening's program, we continue to share excerpts from the Prime Minister's recent press conference and Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Cecil Mackey, talks with us about his ministry's performance during the past year. The details to those stories will follow Newswatch. Stay with us. Good evening, welcome to this edition of Newswatch for Tuesday, January 9th, 2018. I'm Nelly Skipid, thanks for joining us. The annual Nine Mornings Festival prize giving ceremony was held at the Peace Memorial Hall on Saturday, bringing the curtains down on the 2017 festival. Deputy Chairman of the Nine Mornings Committee, Lennox Bowman, in his remarks noted that the festival is an outlet for creative expression of all forms and commended communities for their contribution towards the festival. Nine Mornings remains the place where Vincentian culture of all forms are on display most readily, more than any other time of the year. The various cultural art forms you see at Nine Mornings, <laughs> it's only Nine Mornings could bring those together in the manner in which they, they, come, they come together. So we must continue to encourage and to showcase that talent. Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Cecil Mackey, in his address outlined the benefits of the Nine Mornings Festival and encouraged those in attendance to work towards making it even better. First of all, you build community spirit. You bring persons together, whether on the organizing committee in your own particular area or persons just come out and prompt you whether one night, several nights, mornings, and make a contribution to what is happening in their area. And that community spirit is done before nine mornings begins and hopefully would continue for the entire year leading up to the following nine mornings program. You also bring to life different aspects of the communities, whether in the food, the drink, the drama on stage and in doing so you keep the nine mornings tradition of St. Vincent and the Grenadines very much alive in your own communities and throughout the length and breadth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The nine mornings competition segment comprised a total of 10 major categories. Among those receiving awards were winners of the poster competition. Kadeem Burton is a 2017 winner of the 12 to 16 years category of the It's My Nine Mornings poster competition. Alcyon Williams took the second spot and Glenicia Abraham was awarded third place. In the 7 to 11 years category, Tirella Cato walked away with the top prize. Whilst at the Botanical Gardens for an interview, Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Sabota Caesar, used the opportunity to welcome a group of tourists. At the time, cruise visitors were in the gardens taking in the scenery and learning more about the garden's history. This was earlier today, Tuesday, January 9th. The visitors appreciated Minister Caesar's welcome. As part of its marine conservation efforts, the government of Belize has adopted a full oil moratorium for all Belize offshore waters, including the entire Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System World Heritage Site. The Belize Reef System is the second largest reef system in the world, with approximately 200,000 Belizeans dependent on the reef for their livelihood. 
This is according to news released from UNESCO's World Heritage Center. Director of the UNESCO World Heritage Center, Mathilde Rossler, said the World Heritage Committee has always taken a strong position that oil and gas exploration or exploitation activities are incompatible with World Heritage status and the moratorium taken by the government of Belize is fully in line with this. Director Rossler congratulated the Belize government for its leadership and thanked both civil society and the government for working tirelessly hand in hand to safeguard the site for future generations. The Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System World Heritage Site has been included on the list of World Heritage in Danger since 2009. The oil ban is a major milestone in efforts to protect the reef and remove the site from the danger list. The World Heritage Committee will evaluate the status of the site at its forthcoming session from June 24 to July 4, 2018 in Manama Marine. The United Nations, having established 17 Sustainable Development Goals, is this week choosing to recognize Goal 2. Goal 2 calls for zero hunger with a specific aim to end hunger, achieve food security and improved nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. According to the United Nations, these 17 goals are geared towards transforming our world. The United Nations statement on this specific goal says it is time to rethink how we grow, share and consume our food and if done right, agriculture, forestry and fisheries can provide nutritious food for all and generate decent incomes while supporting people-centered rural development and protecting the environment. A change of the global food and agriculture system is needed in order to nourish today's 795 million hungry and the additional 2 billion people expected by 2050. According to the United Nations, the food and agriculture sector offers key solutions for development and is central for hunger and poverty eradication. In 2015, countries adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. This is where we end News Watch for this evening. I'm Nelly Skipid. The API presentation continues. Have a good evening. What's it? 380 people on health board say at least all these snacks could cause hypertension. You love watch money, eh? But no, Rosie is not a doctor. I'm concerned about the kids' health. Nothing is wrong with our children. They look very healthy. Rosie, let me tell you something. Let me start. Read the food labels and choose less salt. Okay, honey. So what are we going to do? We're going to read, read the food, food labels and choose less salt. Salt, the silent killer, cut down on salt. Thank you for staying with us. And if you're just joining us, then welcome. This is the presentation from the API. At a recent press conference, Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalves highlighted three major concerns that he has brought to the attention of CARICOM Secretary General, Ambassador His Excellency Owen LaRocque. These matters include foreign exchange for Vincentian traffickers who sell goods to Trinidad and Tobago, outstanding payments to British American insurance company policyholders, and the Caribbean Air Navigation and Advisory Services Limited, CANAS. We get more details from the Prime Minister's press conference in the following report by Keisha Woodley. Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Ralph Gonzalez at a recent press conference stated he has written to the CARICOM Secretary General to have on the agenda a number of items which concern St. Vincent Town, the Grandines, and Trinidad and Tobago. Also, Dr. Gonzalez has disclosed that he has written to the Prime Minister of the same country on issues between us which will be raised at CARICOM. The shortage of foreign exchange in Trinidad and Tobago has a serious effect 
on the farmers here. You heard me on this before. I've been struggling on it this year. We have put up, put in a, a, a temporary measure, which is working, and I'll talk about it and bring you up to date on it. Because I represent a farming community and the Unity Labour Party is known for its stout defense of farmers and promotion of their interests all over the country. And I, as you know, the man with a farming background, and it is my it is in my soul and in my it's in my blood. So you know that every day I wake up, I think about the farmers. I think about the people too. I could understand some people, if either because they brought up on something else or they come from somewhere where they never have any contact with farming, don't have it, not have it as an afterthought. But with me, it is central in my head and in my daily work. We have set up at the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and we were able to do it fairly easily once we had between the government and the, the NIS a majority shareholding. We provide up to about $2.5 million in the aggregate TT for the farmers to buy TT. So you bring your, you bring your draft up from Trinidad. give you here. Every week we, 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 we do about 200,000, well just over 200,000 TT. The average is going to be 13, 13, 13 point something million dollars a year. But if the foreign exchange is available in Trinidad, we'd be able to do a bigger trade. If the foreign exchange is available, because a number of persons don't want to sell to traders who trade in Trinidad, they say it's taking too long to get my money. Well, recently the reality is catching up that we're helping in this regard through the Bank of St. Vincent. And what we have been trying to do is to, the Bank of St. Vincent would sell some to, a few weeks ago they sold some TT dollars to the Accountant General, meaning that we pay some bills which we have in Trinidad. I just said the government in TT dollars. And last week we sold just about two hundred thousand dollars to Republic Bank. And Republic Republic has promised that as foreign exchange becomes available, they'll buy it. And they're buying it at the, the, the going rate. Because they themselves are seeing what the challenge is, what is the problem, and I'll come to it. I've explained it to CARICOM, I've explained it to my friend Keith Rowley. It can't be right and proper. Anytime you sell your oil to us from Petrochin, or you sell us Buster, or any kind of soft drink including, you sell us the water from Trinidad, or you sell us Bermuda's biscuit, whatever you sell us, we pay you in foreign currency. And if you get if you get EC dollars, it's like US dollars because for every EC dollar we have in circulation, we have US dollars back in it. The issue of the outstanding sums of money owed to British American insurance company policyholders is one that urgently needs to be addressed, Dr. Gonsalves stated. And a commitment was made to us 
for 100 million US dollars in relation to British American insurance company. It was reported to CARICOM, we agreed on it, everything. We didn't even consider it to be sufficient, but went along. In the early period, Kamala's government paid 34 million and 36 million and 64 remaining. And since the last two years, we haven't gotten the money. And, and every time we raise it, they say that they're not in a situation to pay. Well, now, if you're not in a situation to pay, tell me when. If it's 64, if you can give us 20 this year so that I can have the judicial manager distribute it throughout the region to people to get a little bit more. And next year again, so that people can know, they can look forward to something. And I have to be fighting on behalf of our policyholders in, in, in these respects. Dr. Gonsalves has called for representation on the Caribbean Air Navigation and Advisory Services Limited CANAS board. The planes which pass over in our airspace, in the OECS, in Barbados, we, have, we should get money for that. Because it's our property. But we are not represented on CANAS board. And I'm calling for representation for ourselves and Barbados and the OECS countries and Barbados support me in this. Just talking to Prime Minister Stewart a few days ago on this very issue. Because I have to remind everyone again and we have to line it up properly. Want representation as to how we deal with our property. Secondly, I want transparency. I want to know how much money is being collected and how much it is costing to manage the Piaco Flight Information region. You can't be running it by yourself, not telling me how much you're making. All you tell me, well, you know, it costs money to run it. I said, okay, if the expenses to run it are more than the revenues, I would like to pay to the expenses. I don't want a free ride, but you can rest assured that if they won't make in a good dollar off of it, I would, I would hear a long time about how we have to contribute. And while they are, they will give some training to these civil aviation authorities or, or, or directorate of airports in these various territories and some computers and so on. I would prefer not to get those things. Tell me how much money it is that I am supposed to get. And then I will tell you how I would like my money to be spent. I don't think that this is a is such an unreasonable position to take. Dr. Gonsalves reaffirmed that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has excellent relations with Trinidad and Tobago. However, these issues call for dialogue and close collaboration. As we have with all other CARICOM countries, and we are not in this thing for mashing up CARICOM or create confusion or anything, what we are talking about is for us to solve these kinds of difficulties. And CARICOM itself would be undermined if it is unequally yoked. You can't have such a large balance of trade in your favor and not allowing us to get the foreign exchange to pay our farmers. It can't be right. Keith is my good friend. <laughs> Trinidad is a country of great importance to us, as we are to them. We work closely. We have a good relationship. 
but even among friends. When we have difficulties, we have to talk about them and resolve them. With just one month away from the first anniversary of the Argyle International Airport, Prime Minister Gonsalves is pleased with the progress of the airport thus far. I would say that the International Airport, which we have, which we opened last year, I mean, in, yes, February the 14th, we have seen from one capital at least, important capital, Toronto. We have seen regular flights. We have seen other charters which have come from different destinations. I know that this year we are going to see out of New York, and I expect to out of Miami, New York earlier than Miami. Miami would be a little later in the year. And hopefully we get Bokama up and running by summer. We should see something out later the year out of the United Kingdom. Now this is immense progress for an airport which has just been opened. And anybody who, if you saw what happened before Christmas and right up to the new year, right now to today. Hadley Bourne, the chief executive officer, told me that in the period from just before Christmas, it's 13, 14 private jets were coming there and landing a day. You saw the number of them. And they're improving their service to, the air, to, to the, all of these aircraft. Um, Channel One was full. The the the, the tarmac. Um, clearly, some of these planes are planes which would have in the older P, in the older day in 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 before Argyle would have been in Barbados or Saint Lucia. In light of a recent incident involving a Vincentian diplomat in the United States, Dr. Gonsalves made a general statement on the conduct of past and current diplomats. I know because we had two hiccups, diplomatic hiccups in New York. One at the consulate a few years ago with someone who was who had to be terminated because they were conducting they were doing things outside the scope of their employment. They didn't sell passports for St. Vincent. They couldn't because we had stopped the selling of passports when we came to office. And that lie still continues that you're selling passports. Can't sell passports. Passports are only issued out of the capital. <laughs> you know, communication is too easy to have to... to... to to be done in, 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 in New York or anywhere else. You can help people, fill out forms and so on, you can send things, but they're issued here. So that was one where he was acting outside of the scope of his employment. Didn't did fraud the government of St. Vincent, none of that. A second incident took place not at the consulate, but at the New York mission where a person who had a position turned down the ranks, well, he and another person occupied um, positions of minister councillors because you had a permanent representative, the ambassador king, then you had the, 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 the deputy, then you had two other persons. This gentleman being one of them. You know what happened in that regard. But as often with critics, every difficult tea which arises is generalized as though it's a malaise. They don't talk about the excellent appointments, for instance, 
Lasilia Prince, the, the youngest woman ever to be appointed as an ambassador for our country. She subsequently went on to work with the OAS in a senior position. First woman who was appointed, who did a very good job at the United Nations, Miss, uh, Mrs. Um, Ferrari, Margaret Ferrari. They, they're not talking about that. Young lady, uh, 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 someone who's chief education officer here, who is our ambassador now in Washington. Very distinguished professional, teacher, administrator. Everybody knows Luan, and they know her temperament, they know her quality. We just appointed a young lady from New Grounds, 31 years old, with a master's degree in international relations to be the number two person in the mission. She worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here for many years. We had the youngest ambassador at the United Nations at one time in Camilo, who did fantastic work also at the United Nations. We have Rhonda King now, who is an extraordinary personality. When I, when I went to see the Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General, about six weeks ago, and I was in New York, I spent 90 minutes with him. He said, Prime Minister, you have some competent ambassadors at the United Nations, and then you have some stars. He says, and one of the shining stars is Ambassador King. St. Vincent and the Grenadines at the United Nations up to September last year. I don't know if anybody, news release was issued about it, I spoke about it. I haven't seen anybody picked it up because apparently in some circles good news shouldn't travel farther from my, further than my mouth when I issue it. St. Vincent de Grenadines was the chair up to September last year of the fifth committee, which deals with the budget and uh, an administration, oversaw the budget and the administration at the, the UN. St. Vincent and Grenadines, you know. St. Vincent and Grenadines today at the United Nations is one of the four vice chairs of ECOSOC, Powerful Economic and Social Council. Betty Boy, my, my cousin from Betty King, from Byer Hill, an American citizen, was she was U.S. ambassador to ECOSOC under Bill Clinton. It is expected in June that St. Vincent will take the chair of ECOSOC. ECOSOC is responsible for the oversight of the 2030 development, which is a body of the United Nations. Less than two months ago, in Paris, St. Vincent de Grenadines was, ex was elected to the 54-member executive committee of UNESCO. We know the importance of UNESCO. United Nations Educational, Social, and Cultural Organization. Certain number are elected every year and from different parts of the world, and six were to be elected from Latin America and the Caribbean. You know the six countries which got elected? Jamaica, St. Lucia, Grenada, Cuba, Venezuela, St. Vincent Grenadines. We got 115 votes. Cuba, Cuba got one of five. Venezuela is the last to be elected, got 69. Countries like 
Argentina, which is a G20 country. Got 40 little bit vote, 42 votes. Chile and Colombia, which are powerful countries, are in the teens. You hear me? In votes. According to Prime Minister Gonsalves, St. Vincent and the Grenadines will ramp up its campaign to become a member of the United Nations Security Council next year. We began to do it um, you know, in meetings and under the, the radar, so to speak, for the election next year middle of next year for the two-year period 2020 and 2021 to be a member of the United Nations Security Council, a non-permanent member. If elected, we would be the smallest country ever have been elected to that position to deal with issues concerning war and peace. St. Vincent the Grenadines has a particular perspective and we are selling ourselves on the basis of small island exceptionalism which has a voice to carry on issues relating to climate change, issues relating to world peace, Issues relating to nuclear weapons, issues relating to solving conflicts by peaceful means. And of course, I say climate change is an existential question. These announcements were made on Tuesday, 2nd January 2018 from the Cabinet Room. Reporting for the Agency for Public Information, I am Keisha Woodley. You're viewing the presentation from the API. Let's take a break now. When we come back, Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Cecil Mackey, talks about the performance of his ministry during the past year. We'll be back in just a moment. <music> St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Welcome back. You're viewing the presentation from the API. Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Cecil Mackey, has described the performance of his ministry in 2017 as successful and outstanding. Minister Mackey made the point while reviewing the performance of his ministry in an interview with the Agency for Public Information. Here is more. Good evening and Happy New Year to viewers of the Agency for Public Information. We're at the office of the Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Cecil Mackey. Minister Mackey, on this evening's program, will look at the year 2017 in review for his ministry and tell us about his projections for the year 2018. Is Minister Mackey, good evening, welcome, and Happy New Year to you and staff. Uh, thank you very much, Dion, and I want to take this opportunity to say a pleasant uh, New Year 2018 to all Vincentians, whether they live in here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines or abroad. Minister, how did the tourism sector uh, fare in 2017? If I was allowed to put it into one word, I would say massive. I think the sector really performed beyond expectations for 2017. If we look at the aspects that would allow us to uh, arrive at that conclusion, we look at our arrivals by air. And we see that on the 14th of February 2017, we were able to commission the Argyle International Airport. And we saw later on in 2017 that we are currently enjoying our best cruise season ever. And I suspect that that would also transfer to our arrivals by yacht as well. So I expect that those numbers would also be quite impressive uh, at the end of the, the, the cruise and the yachting season. 
in one word, massive, um, outstanding performance in, in terms of the tourism sector. And I think being the number one um, productive sector in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is very important for the economy. And I expect that that would also translate to um, uh, improved performance in the economy as well. Um, we know that 2017 was a trying year um, for uh, ourselves and a lot of our, our neighboring islands. Um, so I think with the good performance of the tourism sector, um, that would uh, actually allow us to, to show some growth in terms of the economy of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Another important component of your ministry is that of sports and uh, quite a lot of organizations, sporting organizations that is, excelled tremendously in 2017. You care to highlight some of these for us? Yes, what we did over the, the year 2017, we engaged uh, various aspects of sports in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So we were able to do, um, for example, the development aspect, um, uh, which the um, Department of Physical Education and Sports, um, they were very much involved in that aspect. That's dealing with the motto skills of the, of the, the children, eye and hand coordination, foot coordination. Um, uh, the department was also into the communities, um, doing various programs. Um, so with the schools, with the communities, um, with the churches, um, uh, they would have tapped on the resources, the skill sets of uh, past national players, um, and they. They, they, they labeled that program giving back. Um, so we had these persons who would have represented at the highest level um, giving back um, in terms of the skills um, that they would have picked up over the years. Then we would have engaged the various federations, associations um, to see how we can work closer together um, so that we can get um, better results. Um, we would have also um, done uh, the continuing ongoing concession programs where um, teams, uh, associations, federations, um, they will be able to access whether equipment, uniforms that are not available here, um, some to their parent bodies. We have done development programs, um, working in collaboration with the National Olympic Committee as well. And the National Sports Council, of course, they're responsible for facilities. Um, so we're able to develop facilities. Now we have 63 hard courts, 54 playing fields throughout the, the, the country. We're able to actually develop um, three major facilities. Um, we had Cumberland and we have Park Hill. They have been added to the list of regional fields that we now have available. And we added the whole playing field during the course of 2017 as well. Um, so what we set out to do is to zone the country and we have done so successfully. We have zoned the country with the intention of having at least one regional standard field in each zone. That would facilitate um, the sportsmen and women in those areas having a top class facility um, to upgrade their, their, their skills, their performances, and also importantly to host sporting fixtures in those areas um, so that the communities will become involved. It would also involve economic spin off positively. Um, so, those are the, some of the things that we have concentrated over, over 2017 and uh, successfully so you. Uh, mentioned there that we can also look at the success of several of the sporting disciplines. Um, standout associations would have been swimming. They did quite well regionally. Um, they have quite a lot to show um, as a result of it. We had uh, the two um, cricketers went on to represent the West Indies, Keswick Williams and um, young Sunil Ambus. Um, so that was achievement in, in cricket. We had the squash players also going out and doing um, quite well in the regional um, competitions. So those would be some of the standout um, associations that would, would come to mind. But of course for 20, 2018, I'm sure that we'll be looking forward to even greater success. One of the major highlights for Coltier in the year 2017 was the 40th uh, celebration of June-July Mass. Uh, what are the other areas that you wish to highlight? Well, when we reflect on 2017, we would see that we are able to further enhance what we um, would have achieved two years ago. That is to be able to now reflect a full calendar 
of sporting and cultural events. So you can go down the, 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 the months now of the year. Um, for example, in January, we have the Rhythms and Blues Festival, um, which is held in, in Bekwe. Um, in the month of, uh, of April, um, May, we'd have Easterval in Union Island and the Regatta, um, which is held in, in Bekwe. Um, when you go down to June, July, we have Vinci Mass. You just mentioned that 2017, we had the 40th anniversary of Vinci Mass in June, July. Tremendous success. Um, we had activities leading up um, to June, July, which were all well patronized. So we have a good, good platform to build on for, for 2018. The month of August is Emancipation Month. Um, we have the Breadfruit Festival that is being developed now, especially in the North Leeward area. The month of October, Independence Month, we now have a full month of activities which include um, many aspects of culture, many aspects of sports and we saw that what happened in, in, 20, um, in 2017 where we had um, the motorsport e events, we had the, the Masters uh, cricket event and um, for 2018 we are going to, to build on those and um, we also had the ITF, International Tennis Federation program um, put on by the, the, the Tennis Association that was held in, in April as well. And um, next year we're going to have, a, in 2018, we're going to have a, an addition um, to, to that. And in the month of December, um, where culture is concerned, um, unique to St. Vincent and the Grenadines nine mornings, the, the analysis is still being done, but I think this would have been one of the, the bigger years in terms of crowd participation, attendance um, for our nine mornings activity. Um, and we also had adjacent to that the, um, the nine nights activity at, at Botanic Gardens. And we also had for the second year, uh, the street tennis competition, um, which we are doing in collaboration with um, our friends from Barbados. Uh, this year we moved up from participation of about 40, 50 um, last year to about um, 100, close to 100 participants um, um, in that tournament this year, including about 10 persons from Barbados. And as a result of that, for 2018, we are going to add an international component um, to that competition. The Argyle International Airport and its opening in February of 2017, um, I believe is primarily responsible for some of the levels of success you you've had how do you see the airport um fitting into your schedule for 2018 and the programs which you have in place so we were all aware of the fact that access to the destination um st vincent and the grenadines has always been a challenge or a major challenge uh, it was a, a nightmare a headache um, to get to st vincent and the grenadines it took days in some cases a luggage was uh, lost uh, misplaced uh, all kind of issues and challenges. Um, with the coming to be in of the Agal International Airport in 2017, 14th of February, um, that has changed things and uh, changed for the better. And uh, I'm happy to report that in nine short months, we were able to actually attract scheduled flights to the destination. Um, our neighboring um, countries, they took um, um, close to two years to do so. Um, so we started off by having the chartered flights that we had um, for the opening of the airport and we did again for the um, 40th anniversary of Vinci Mass. We had charters from um, the USA, we had charters from uh, Canada and uh, in October we also established charters from Toronto um, on Sunwing um, running from October to January and uh, Fortunately for us, we had the uh, Air Canada Rouge coming on with scheduled flights um, which started in December. Happy to report also that both carriers are, are running practically filled for the months of, of January um, and December. And uh, Sunwing will um, end in January, Air Canada will continue to April. We had some very, very encouraging discussions with Sunwing and with, with uh, Air Canada Rouge and there's a possibility that we might see them um, extending their flights um, uh, during uh, next year, uh, 2018 from April um, going forward. Importantly, that we have flights for, for um, Carnival. We already confirmed that we'll have charters with Sunwing for Carnival, but if we can have Air Canada, that will be fine. 
Hopefully, we'd also be able to announce um, pretty shortly scheduled flights from uh, uh, the, the USA as well, from um, JFK. And uh, hopefully, for the winter season 2018, um, October, we'll be able to um, announce um, flights from, um, from Miami as well. So, and we're working very hard on, on getting flights from the UK because we know that um, the Vincentians up there are very keen on having direct flights from the UK as well. Um, so, we are working hard to see if we can make that a reality uh, for 2018. But with um, that improved access to the destination, destination. Um, just let's remind persons that we also have um, airports in Bekwe, um, in Mustique, in Kanawan, in Union Island, in addition to um, St. Vincent and, and the Grenadines. So we have all of these different um, access points um, to, to, to the destination. Um, but I think that having that direct flight um, from North America and hopefully from um, the UK, that will really change things around. I looked at the figures for um, October um, 2017, that's when we have the latest figures, and our arrivals are up close to 14% um, 2017 over, over 2016. That's encouraging the, the major performer, of course, would be the, the cruise lines, and they are up 40%. Um, over over last year's figures. Um, so arrivals by air, um, very hopeful. Um, we didn't expect to see the, 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 the jump immediately. It would take a couple of years for us to, to get not only Vincentians but um, visitors um, coming to the destination and that will come with the, the scheduled flights, the um, reliable um, um, schedule that persons can, um, can log on to. Um, but as I indicated, the arrivals by sea and um, if I can just touch on, on those figures, um, we, 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 we saw that um, for this cruise season, um, there will be a 23% increase in calls to the destination. Um, but more importantly, the capacity of these calls um, would, would have gone up over 200%, close to 300% in terms of the capacity of these ships. We have 10 calls from Britannia, 10 calls from Fantasia, and each of them um, with a capacity of over 4,000 passengers and about 1,700 crew members. Um, so those would swell the numbers in terms of uh, arrivals by crews. Um, most important in those um, increases would be calls to mainland St. Vincent. Last year we had, last season we had 46 calls. This season we're going to have about 114 calls. That's 133% increase in calls to mainland St. Vincent. Some days of the week we see cruise ships in every day of the week. Um, uh, for example, um, last Sunday we had six calls to the destination, twins in Vincent and the others in, in the Grenadines. Um, so it's really, really a huge um, um, cruise season for us. And as I indicated, we expect that the yacht numbers will be good as well. And just to remind persons that these numbers existed before the disasters came to the region. Unfortunately, some of our neighboring countries were hit very hard. Um, we will benefit from a few calls that will be diverted um, our way. But these schedules, um, normally the cruise schedules will be established over a year before. Um, so those were already um, agreed to um, before the, the hurricanes um, hit the region. Um, so we have done a lot of work. Um, we have brought um, the agencies, the agents in, um, the people who organize the, the, the cruises. Um, we brought them in and had discussions with them. We improved on our, our packages where the yachties are concerned. We did an improvement in terms of the security aspect. We have a patrol boat in Beckway. We have one in, in uh, um, uh, Tobago Keys, Mayo, and we also have one on the leeward side of the country. So that aspect was really a, a, a concern to, to some persons. So we have put those things in place um, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to reduce significantly, hopefully, hopefully eliminate altogether um, the incidence of, uh, of crimes against the, the yachties. Um, so arrivals by air, arrivals by sea, very encouraged and 2018 is going to be, um, from our, um, our analysis, is going to be even better um, in terms of the cruise arrivals and also the, the yacht arrivals. Well, 2018 is here, Minister. 
and uh, what are the projections you have uh, for your ministry as it regards to tourism, sports and culture? Well, I just mentioned in terms of tourism, uh, improvements that we, we, we think we'll see um, with the, 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 the additional schedule, chartered flights, um, so that will take care of our arrivals um, by, by, by air. By sea, we are working very closely on a, on a possibility that we'll, we'll see um, St. Vincent being used as a transport. Um, port persons will come here to catch the, the, the cruise lines and, and exit the cruise lines here as well. Um, so there's a good possibility that that would become a reality in, in 2018. But from all indications, I think that the, the numbers will, will, will grow again. Um, as I indicated, up to October, 40% increase in the, in the cruise numbers. So I think those would um, continue to, 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 to improve for 2018 as well. Um, a couple of things that we are looking at um, in terms of the tourism product. The latter half of, uh, of 2017, we were able to launch the Tourism Competitiveness Project. Um, that will be implemented over a three-year period. That would see us looking at things, uh, um, improvements to um, the port facilities, um, the mooring facilities, um, the um, capacity building, representation um, regionally and internationally, and also the question of transportation, ferry service between St. Vincent, uh, Grenada, uh, St. Lucia. Um, so that will be a very important project that will come on stream um, over the next three years, and that would also improve, uh, um, include improvements to um, Port Charlotte. Um, to make that uh, uh, an important um, tourism site as well. It's already important, um, widely visited, um, but we're going to enhance that significantly. Um, one of the things that we have paid particular t attention to in 2017 and which we will continue to do in 2018, the tourism sites throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have about 14 managed sites, which we continue to improve on, um, upgrade um, year um, after year. Um, so we'll be continue to do work on them. We have some new sites that we have identified that we would work on as well. And uh, we, in 2017, we put in the comfort station in, in Indian Bay. Um, in 2018, we were going to put in a comfort station at Villa. And that will uh, improve on, 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 on the amenities that are available to the, to the to visitors there. And also, we're going to be doing some work at, at Brighton Salt Pond. Um, so, improvement on the, on the sites. Um, International Airport. Um, we shall do some some dredging work at at at, at the uh, at the boating facility for the cruise um, ships um, in Kingston as well. Um, so I think where tourism is concerned, we we're, we're looking good, and I um, expect that the numbers would 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 reflect that as well for 2018. How about sports and culture? Sports and culture, yes. Um, sports, one of the things that we're going to do very well, we did it in 2017, we're going to engage all of the associations. We're going to do one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, one of the things that I think we, we will have to insist on is, because if we're going to reap the success that we, we wish, I think each association would have to have a three to five year strategic plan in place. Um, they have to know where they are and where they want to go in the next three to five years. Um, so if they have that document to guide them, I think um, that would assist great and greatly in terms of them achieving. Now, in addition to the one-on-one, -on -one, we have um, the tripartite mechanism, which in includes the ministry, um, the National Sports Council, uh, Department of Physical Education and Sports, and our major funding agency which is National Lotteries Authority. So there's a mechanism set up there to continuously analyze um, what is happening, um, the requests that are, are made. This body will uh, meet every, every three months and in addition to that now we have the stakeholders um, uh, discussions that will be held every, every quarter um, which will bring together all of the associations, all of the federations where we could look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats um, and that we could share experiences among ourselves um, to see how we can, we can, we can build um, uh, sports in St. Vincent and the Grenadines because I, I, I mentioned from the be be beginning of, of, of my stint as, as Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, we have to develop a, a sporting culture um, here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have to see 
with greater clarity um, the opportunities and the possibilities um, lots of money to be made uh, as sportsmen as sportswomen um, and as officials as well so I think once we get this vision with, 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 with greater clarity I think that we'll see um, our sportsmen and women taking up these opportunities um, so Yes, we had success in, in, in 2017, but I think we're hungry for even more success in, in 2018. And as a result, I think that we have to, to strengthen all of these aspects of things. Um, now that we have the facilities in place, now that we have the awards program, that we, we, we do every year and we're going to um, finalize um, discussions in terms of the awards in recognition for achievements in, in 2017 um, then I think that we well on the way to, to say to our, our, our sportsmen and women hi at the end of the day you will be recognized and, and, and rewarded um, for your achievements the, um, the year ended um, so therefore put in even more uh, make yourselves, make your association, make your family, make St. Vincent and the Grenadines even more proud. Where culture is concerned, I think that um, the various festivals and events that I mentioned that we now have outlined in the, in the cultural calendar, um, those are uh, 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 foundation and those are the springboard now for our cultural artists um, to do even more. Um, we look at the achievements of persons regionally, internationally. We can look at Skinny Fabulous. We can look at, uh, at, at Matafix, um, Marlon Rudet. Um, we can look at Kevin Little. And I must make mention here of the Malizwi brothers, um, three young stars uh, from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Canada. Um, they are out there really doing themselves and doing St. Vincent and the Grenadines proud. Um, they had a big conclusion to 2017. Um, and you can see them on, on YouTube, you can see them on Facebook, um, really. Um, getting the attention of the world basically so i think that we we, we need to see more of our artists um going out there and, and performing we know that we had a, a very good year at Cary festa in 2017 um uh, we were um, the center of attraction and uh, i'm sure that once we have opportunities like that provided um that we can have our, our cultural artists um go out and, and and give even more um and with the with the increasing arrivals now through the Agal International Airport, I'm sure that the um, the entertainers, um, the hotel circuit, um, would be able to utilize um, our, our 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 cultural artists even more um, at the at the institutions, um, at the, the the hotels, and also we can have more private in the um, enterprise putting on more more cultural shows um, I, I I can point at two shows at the end of 2017 as well which really highlighted the talent that we have here and really those shows were both of, uh, of regional and international appeal um, that is the Starleaf um, uh, uh, 50th anniversary show in, in, in December and also uh, Steel Expression put on by Rodney Small both of them were, were excellent shows high quality and exposed a lot of the the young talent of St. Vincent and the, and the Grenadines so I think um, where sports and culture is concerned um, we twin that with tourism and we see the vast amount of, of, of potential and possibilities so I think um, for 2018 uh, we, we are in for an exciting year and I think that uh, at the end of 2018 I'm sure that I'll uh, be able to report with as much excitement and enthusiasm in all three sectors. Well, Minister, let me congratulate you and by extension your ministry for all your hard work in 2017. We will certainly look forward to uh, greater things uh, from the Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture uh, in the new year. And uh, congratulations to you once more and all the best. And that is how we end this evening's presentation from the Agency for Public Information. Thank you very much for viewing. I do trust that you found it to be quite informative. Join us again on Thursday DV at 8 p.m. when we will be back with another presentation from the API. Until next time, I am Shana Daniel. Good night and God bless.